as uh, the chairman said, I'm Liliana Cano from the University of Toulouse. And to do, uh, today I'm very glad to present you a, a part of my, my research, which is actually related with income inequality or with a special interest in South American countries. And today I will present a paper which is entitled uh, Income Mobility in Ecuador uh, using individual uh, using data from income tax return. So uh, the presentation will be as follows. In the first part, I will present the main goals and motivation for doing this paper. Then I will make a very brief lit uh, literature review. And the, in the second part, I will present the data methodology, the main finding, which is the most important part, and then the concluding remarks. And so, uh, while many recent studies have recently documented the decline of income inequality in most Latin American countries, there has been less attention to the analysis of mobility in this region. So with this paper, we analyze income mobility in, in Ecuador uh, from 2004 to 2011 uh, using data from tax returns. So we study whether the evolution of top income share has been accompanied or not by an increase or a decrease of mobility at the very top of the distribution. Second, we study whether there is a surge of an Ecuadorian middle class. Uh, and there, we analyze the factor uh, associated with income mobility over the three years of the period. Uh, which are the motivation for doing this paper? I have two main motivations. The first motivation is based on the growing interest in, in the study of income inequality at the top of the distribution. So starting with the seminal work of Piketty in 2001, 2003, how many research have, inter uh, have constructed series of top income shares using data uh, from tax uh, returns and national accounts. And today, uh, following uh, the methodology proposed by Piketty and by, by Atkins, Atkinson also, and today we have uh, a series, series has been constructed uh, in more than 20, 25 countries. And as we saw yesterday, most, uh, all of, of these series are available in the, in the world of income database. So uh, here is Ecuador, and um, we are, uh, we follow this growing uh, literature and we, are, um, we construct top income series uh, using this, um, uh, this methodology. And the second motivation is based on the study of intra-generational mobility. A recent economic report from the World Bank documented that almost 40% of, of, of Latin American individuals had experienced change in their economic uh, post status over the last years. And most of these movement, movements, uh, uh, there are upward movements. And for Ecuador, estimates, estimates of income mobility are scarce, and mostly, mostly do because uh, we don't have the appropriate data for doing this kind of study. And it's worth noting that the World Bank, in, 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 the, in the recent economic report, he works with synthetic panics. Panels because data, uh, panel data is not, not so easy to, to find in, in, in most countries. And we take advantage so of our tax uh, database, which is a panel database, and we study mobility for the entire tax filing population. Um, so the third part of the literature review, I will just very quickly. Um, there are sociological and economical approach of mobility. In this paper, I will focus exclusively on, uh, econo in an economic uh, approach. Uh, literature of income mobility is very vast and doesn't provide an harmonized framework of analyze uh, because the word mobility may connote different ideas to different researchers. So an important review of a conceptual we can find in, in, in fields, Atkinson, Jenkins, field, uh, bookcase, her coach, etc. Et we distinguish three main uh, uh, definitions of mobility. Mobility as movement, mobility as time and dependence. So is the uh, present income more or, or less the terminal of a future income? Mobility is equalized of long term. If uh, 
there are, uh, there are uh, a chains of income at some point of time could be uh, influence income in the future and mobility as moving, uh, are people moving up or moving down in the income distribution. Besides, there are two main dimensions of mobility. So mobility, uh, intragenerational mobility, and uh, intergenerational mobility. Intragenerational mobility is when we follow the same unit over time. We analyze the uh, income dynamic and dynamics of the same unit. And intergenerational mobility is more related to uh, the study of, of, of generational, uh, for instance, as uh, child's income more or less related with parents' income. Um, and so, because we are interested in mobility at the top of the distribution, there are, I made a little, uh, um, a little research of uh, literature review on top incomes. And we, have, we don't have so many studies on top income mobility because first, uh, I think that is a recent uh, literature. And second, uh, data, mostly tax return data, is difficult to obtain and to make this kind of studies. So uh, starting in the intergenerational mobility, we have uh, studies made by Alton and Guy for the United States. Computer also for United States, I and Fred for Canada, Lande for France, and intergenerational mobility, Shaggy, uh, in the United States, and Europe Land, and for Sweden. Most of the results of those studies suggest that the evolution of top incomes have not been accompanied by an increase in mobility at the very top of the distribution. On average, almost 60%, depending on the country, of people who, who, stay, who belong to the top uh, distribution remind at the top of the distribution after different pe periods of time. You know, on average, 60% in, in, in most countries. And so, based on, uh, on, on this uh, literature review, I mobilized um, four hypotheses. So, uh, the first hypothesis is that income mobility trend in Ecuador has not been accompanied by an increase of mobility at the very, at the very top. The second hypothesis is that I mobilize that there is a high degree of upward mobility, as we saw in most Latin American countries over the past years. Uh, upward mobility is mainly explained by the initial position in the income distribution, and the upward economic effect of education on income mobility should be more or as important as the initial position. And so, uh, I'm, I started the second part of, of, of the presentation, so I will present the data, methodology, and the main results. Uh, we work with um, micro data from income tax returns from 2004 to 2011. We have the universe of tax filers. Uh, this is a, da a data that is, um, that is produced by the Ecuadorian Internal Service. So it's the uh, SRI in for the Spanish acronym. Um, we have information for every tax filer. We have information on labor income, on capital income, returns to capital, uh, other kind of income. Um, it, this mainly comes for three different tax forms. Though the first is uh, 107, which presents the information on salaries and wage. The second uh, form, which presents information on wage, salaries, uh, returns to capital from self-employment individuals. And we have also uh, the uh, 102, we contains information for individual, also for li labor and capital, and for individuals who require to keep an account in books. For instance, in 2011, we work with 2.3 million of, uh, of tax uh, filers. Uh, the unit of observation, uh, the tax unit in, in, in this country is individual as in most South American countries. And of course, we are working with anonymous data. Uh, as we saw yesterday, there are advantages and disadvantages of working with tax data. One the main advantage when we, in, when we have a special interest in, on the top of the distribution is that, that uh, tax data provide a better picture 
this part of the uh, distribution than most whole school surveys. Uh, we have a composition of incomes where we have a very, we can uh, make a, a clear analysis of, of income uh, from labor, from capital, from other source of income, and we are working with a real panel database. The disadvantage, of course, uh, we have a problem of evasion, illusion, and tax reforms over time can uh, change the definition of, of income. Um, also, also, we work with information on individual characteristics of some tax filers from the Ecuadorian Civil Registry. For instance, we got some information on age, on gender, on marital status, uh, level of education, and the region of origin. We have the, the, that information for tax filers on 2008, and uh, we were able to merge this information from the three uh, last years of the period. So in the, in the last part of my analysis, uh, when I, I am studying the factor related with income mobility, I, um, I use uh, the, the, this information. This is, those are my control variables. Um, for uh, six explanatory control variables, so the initial position in the income distribution, age, gender, marital status, level of education, um, and geographical region. It's worth noting that we have uh, very detailed information of level of education, but I just uh, separate of individual with high school and more, and less than high school. Um, and so, the methodology. Um, I organize the methodology in three parts. In the first part, I construct top income shares, following the methodology proposed by PK. A top, uh, uh, top income share, but related so uh, the amount of individual tax returns, which is the numerator of my share, to a comparable control for total population, which is the denominator of the share. Uh, the income definition is before personal income tax and employee ta payroll tax, as is usually proposed by top income literature, I constructed first the top 1%, and then I constructed a, sm a series for smaller fractals, so the top 0.5%, the top 0.1%, etc. Uh, to control total income and total population, I work with household surveys. I, I construct a total income from uh, Ecuadorian household surveys, which is uh, more or less 65% uh, of, of GDP at, at, at the end, and I work with population age of uh, 20 and more. Th that, th those are my control variables. Normally, uh, for people who are, uh, who are familiar with uh, top income uh, literature, uh, uh, Control total income comes from national accounts. In our previous working paper, we work with national accounts to construct control, uh, we con to construct control uh, variables. Uh, and in this occasion, I work with, uh, with household service to construct that, that, those variables. Uh, once we have constructed top income series, I analyze <coughs> the persistence of, 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 top, uh, of top individuals. So uh, I, I, I compute the probability of remaining in the top after one, two, three years uh, 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 after. And then using transition matrix, I examine, I, I, I study the movement into the economic elite. Second, I made the same thing for the entire tax filing population. It's worth noting that here I have a methodological difference. In the second part, in the second part, I don't use control variables. All uh, uh, transition matrix are relative to the tax filing population, and this is why uh, this is mainly for one reason. If I use control variable for the entire tax filing population, I am only able to capture, for instance, in 2011, almost 25% of the population, of the total population. 
potential population. So for the top, I use control variables as proposed by Piketty. And for the entire population, I don't use control variables. So movements are related to the tax filing population. Uh, I will do it quickly. And factor uh, to study uh, uh, mobility, I use three models, first accounting procedure, then a multinomial logic model, and then a generalized order logic model. Um, logic model um, for 2008 and 2011, we have a 1.3 million, million, and so we are able to control by initial position well, for people who are present in both years, about 1.4 million of observation. It, we have control variables, information on control variables for about 7,000 observations. In the third part, so when I analyze factor uh, related with mobility, I, I have a limit, a methodological limitation. How many centiles, how many income cited people ha have moved? So I use another multinomial log model, log model to, ass to assess upward or downward movement of at least 10 centiles. And then uh, uh, I make a transformation, a logic transformation of my dependent variable to, but to measure the change in the person's pos position of, uh, of uh, individuals. So the main findings, let me go quickly. So we have construct top income series. For instance, people need an income of uh, almost uh, 70,000 70,000 to belong to the top 1%. In the top 0.001%, we have uh, 94 units. And those people, to belong to, to the top 0.01%, uh, people need uh, about 2 million of, 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 uh, of, of income, 2 million dollars of, of, of income. Those, those, those amounts are expressed um, in, in dollars. We have the series of top, uh, top one, uh, consisting with uh, prior empirical evidence based on household service, we find also a declining trend in, 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 in income concentration. In 2011, uh, almost 20% of total income goes to the top 1% of the popula population. Um, uh, it's, it's consistent with, uh, with uh, some Latin American countries for which we have, uh, we have information. For, for, for instance, in Colombia, I think that is uh, 25%, and Uruguay, 12%, and now in Ecuador, we compute almost 20%. Uh, uh, and then I just uh, make a, a, I decompose a top in, in, in smaller fractals. And then I compute the probability of a stay in the top 1%. On average, 55% is the probability to remain at the top of the distribution. After one year, 60, uh, 60, uh, 56% per, uh, percent after two years, and almost 50% uh, after three years of the top one. Uh, same thing for the the top 0.01%, the probability is on average is 30%, 10, uh, 20%, and 15% after one, two, or three years. We saw that uh, probability of a stay you know, of the top 0.01% top is smaller than the probability of the top 1%, which is, which is normal because m maybe th those people are very transient o o over, over time. So I, I, I don't know if it's obvious so for that. Uh, I, I, I was wondering if people who are in the top are more likely to move among the top or are more likely to drop uh, to the bottom 99% uh, uh, 90, or 95%. So to know that, I'm studying movements between, between um, the economic elite. So, the diagonal entries of my um, diagonal entries of my my transition matrix uh, show the stayer groups 
The rows correspond to the top percentile at origin, and the columns to the top percentile, percentile at destination. So we can see that, for instance, the top one, people in the top one, uh, almost 82% uh, had moved by 2011. Most of, the, of this movement, the movement, there is an upward movement. People, the results is people in the top are more likely to remain on the top. And if they are movements, they are most moving until the top 5%. People who are in the top and who drop to the bottom uh, um, nine, uh, uh, 95% is almost 20%. Uh, and the smaller practice. Factor associate, I will be very movie, counting, multi, generalize. With the three methods, I find that people, yeah, people, people who are in the middle of the distribution experience an upward movement. People who are in the middle are movement, uh, are, 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 are almost 75% uh, uh, move to an upper uh, vessel by 2011. The same thing when I use the multinomial logical model, and the same thing when I use a uh, generalized ordered logical model. Which is very interesting is that people who have a level of, uh, and who holds an, an, a high school diploma, a high school uh, degree, are more likely to experience upward movement. movement. So education plays a, a key role in, in, in income mobility. And then the last one <laughs> is um, we have, uh, we, uh, I analyze um, the probability of experience an upward movement and downward movement uh, relative to, to um, relative to uh, not, not proving. And so the same thing people who have an education are more likely to experience an upward movement. And we model, when we model sentinel effects, we, we saw that the initial position, people who are in the, in the first and the second and the third and the fourth decile, are more likely to experience a movement of about 45% sentinel, uh, uh, sorry, sentinel, uh, 25 sentinel, etc. When I put all the control variables. People who have an education, a level of education, are more likely to, uh, to experience an, up, an upward movement of nine centile, and which is more important, woman, which, I, which is very important, a woman who have an, a, a high school degree are more likely to experience an upward movement of about 11 centile. Thank you very much.